So generally, if I know I'm going to go see a movie, I like to put my thoughts on film or not film. This isn't film. This is digital, whatever. I like to get my uh, get my thoughts on camera and then see the movie and then add my review to that at the end of this video. So just a heads up, the first few minutes is before I've seen the movie, but the, the second half is going to be my post scene movie review so i'm going to go see jurassic world tonight um i'm not that excited again there's not a lot of movies that come through town and this is the one that's in english this week uh, i was really hoping and i knew it wasn't going to happen but for upgrade to show up because I, I really want to see that and i don't think i'm going to be able to until it comes out on apple tv or something so yeah uh, i'm going to see jurassic world 2 uh, fallen kingdom and I watched the trailer just now and it's I don't know I don't know if I'm too critical about it because I didn't really like the first one and this one feels kind of unnecessary so I'm already have a tainted view of it but it, it just looks really boring uh, it looks like they use clips that show danger with mainly Chris Pratt that it looks like he gets in a lot of situations but then they show clips from later on in the movie where he gets out my assumption is they're going to start out on the island, get all the dinosaurs off the island, and then the dinosaurs are going to get free. And so the scene where Chris Pratt is running after that ball and he has to jump into the, the ocean, that all happens before they get back to the States or wherever they're at. And so all the scenes of him in a city kind of deflate that tension of him, oh, maybe he's dead also they show her Bryce Dallas Howard in the water in the ball with Chris Pratt standing outside of it trying to help her and I, I don't know I maybe I shouldn't watch trailers but that's I don't know <laughs> I don't know um, I don't I don't really anticipate anyone dying uh, I think everyone's gonna make it out okay I, this doesn't seem like a franchise that's really willing to kill off anyone definitely don't think any of the main cast is going to die. I don't think any of the kids are going to die. So it, it, it'll be fine. It'll be, I think it'll just be one of those like, yeah, that, that was okay. That it wasn't terrible. I think Jurassic world one is going to be worse because people had such high expectations for it and were excited for it. And we're like, couldn't wait to see what happens. And so going into this one, I think at least my expectations are much lower and so it'll be easier for them to hit my expectations which generally means I enjoy the movie more. I'm gonna go see it, I'll come back and I'll tell you what I think. <clears throat> Alright, well I just got back from Jurassic World uh, Fallen Kingdom and I was blown away. I, uh, I had very low expectations, I didn't expect it to be any good and I actually really enjoyed it which is surprising because I don't like a lot of movies I end up seeing them and being disappointed or them not meeting my expectations and this one this one was really good it's probably not as good as the original the very first one but I, I definitely think it takes second place I'm gonna talk full spoilers so the movie starts off it's been three years since the last movie and they are well it starts off the, the beginning scenes actually kind of boring but they're um, looking for the Indominus Rex the the bad dinosaur from the last movie they're trying to find its bones in the ocean they find it they cut a piece off and they're extracting it to take back to someone they don't tell you who at that point uh, but so they have that and then everything goes wrong everything falls apart it's a pretty standard opening to a jurassic world movie where you have bad guys doing a bad thing and they get thwarted by the dinosaurs that all happens um the trailer kind of spoiled what was going to happen where the guy hops onto the helicopter and i think they called it the moses i, I don't remember the giant alligator type dinosaur that's in the ocean comes up and eats the guy that's on the helicopter um, he eats the guys in the submarines and it's just, I don't know. It's, it's fine. It's, it's not that exciting. It's just kind of what you expect. Um, but it jumps forward a little bit and we find out that the volcano that's on the Island 
is going to erupt. And there's this big discussion between uh, the government and all these people about what do we do with these dinosaurs? If this volcano erupts, it's going to kill all the dinosaurs that's living on the island. And I found that a really fascinating way to bring you back into the story because it makes you question, well, should we save these dinosaurs? Because they were brought back to life, they were extinct, they were brought back to life, and they've caused a lot of harm, they've done a lot of damage, but that's just their nature. They're just doing what they're supposed to do. You know, lions will attack, alligators will attack, bears will attack, and we don't consider going out and, you know, destroying them because they've hurt people. But this idea of do we save all the dinosaurs off this island when one, they're there kind of artificially, they weren't supposed to be there, they were put there, and two, they're a risk to the population. And so I, I thought that was a really cool way to bring you back into the story. And what happens is the government decides, you know, it's not worth the risk. They're there. This is an act of God. We're not going to intervene. They were extinct once. They clearly need to be extinct again. Uh, Bryce Dallas Howard gets brought back into it because she knows the island. She knows all the stuff. And one of the, there's this rich guy who works for um, the old founding member. The I can't remember his name. That They split off him and... Um, Heyman? Uh, anyways, they they split because they had differences of what they should do with the technology. And so they want to, this guy comes to Bryce Dallas Howard and says, oh, we, we have this other island. We want to move 11 species from the island to this sanctuary so they can live you know, it's not going to be for tourists. We're not going to, you know, try to make money off of them. We just want them to be able to survive, to be able to live and, you know, just be dinosaurs. And uh, so Bryce Dallas Howard is really excited because she actually started working for a, a dinosaur protection group. I don't know. They're, you know, calling uh, government officials and trying to get them to vote in favor of keeping the dinosaurs alive. They're organizing marches and all this different stuff. And well, they're doing that. And so she gets a call from the rich guy and says, we need your help. And we also need you to get Owen, who is Chris Pratt's character, to come and help you as well. Come and help us uh, get Blue because Blue is the most advanced dinosaur. We can learn so much from that dinosaur. We need to figure out a way to get Blue onto this island so we can study it. Well, Bryce Dallas Howard and Chris Pratt had broken up, and so she's like, I don't know if he's going to do it, but I'll try. And she goes and meets with Chris Pratt, and they actually give Chris Pratt uh, character, personality. The first movie, he was so boring. He was so wooden and stale, and he didn't... He It seemed weird that they would cast him and then wash away all his personality and in this one it was you know it's not quite like Andy Dwyer running around with dinosaurs but it's much closer than it was last time it was actually enjoyable to watch him on screen and to kind of see his personality come through and his uh chemistry with Bryce Dallas Howard is really great they you you believe that they know each other that they like each other and that they dislike each other all at the same time um, there were two new-ish characters, uh, Zia and Franklin, that come along, and they work for Bryce Dallas Howard's uh, Dinosaur Protection Agency or whatever. Um, Zia was tough. She's not a good character, in my opinion. She was very confident in everything she was doing. So she was a I think she called herself a paleo vet or something like that. She was a, a veterinarian for dinosaurs. Um, but she was never scared. She was never, you know, frazzled or, you know, anything. She was just always confident and always cocky. And when you compare it to Chris Pratt, who, you know, seems panicked and scared but confident, or Bryce Ellis Howard, who seems, you know, nervous and scared but is still capable, her... The Zia's character was like, 
it's like frustratingly confident. I don't know if that makes sense. It's not, it, it, it just didn't fit. It didn't seem to work with everything else going on. Um, so there was no reason for her to be so confident. There's monsters trying to eat her face and military that's trying to shoot her down. Like you, you don't, you're not a superhero, <laughs> you know, it's fine to be scared or, you know, to show some of that. Even if, even if you want to put on a face in the moment, they don't show any weakness in her character throughout the entire movie. And so it's just, she's kind of a one note character. And I, I, I thought that was kind of a poor choice. Uh, Franklin, who was the computer guy, I hated in the beginning and actually kind of started to like him towards the end. Not, not a lot, but way more than I did with Zia because he somewhat had an arc where he was, he was terrified. He was so scared of going to the island. He didn't want to be there. He didn't, you know, he was afraid of getting eaten. And so they, they're very different in that aspect, him and Zia, but he, he felt more realistic because he was so afraid because that's how you would be. Um, and the, him working, he, he actually had a lot more screen time than Zia did. Zia was only in the movie for, you know, a few scenes. I mean, she was in it throughout, but very short amount of time each time she was in it where Franklin was actually with Chris Pratt and Bryce Dallas Howard quite a bit in the beginning of the movie. And so you kind of, uh, sympathize with him empathize with him a little bit more throughout and so he got he he grew on you a bit more even though his character didn't really develop all that much um and they brought back jeff goldblum and the way they brought him back i thought was kind of cool because again like i was saying originally there was a lot of debate going on should we allow these dinosaurs to live or should we let the volcano kill them and they bring jeff goldblum in to be a um I don't know what you call it, not a character witness, not a witness, but just to, to speak on behalf of the dinosaurs, someone with firsthand experience with them. And his opinion is we shouldn't have brought him back in the first place. Let's let him die. Like, what are we doing here? Like, it's OK. We, you know, they were wiped out originally. We we messed with nature and nature is trying to correct itself. I, I, I don't think I got his speech correct there, but that's basically what. I took from it. I could be wrong. <clears throat> so they get to the island and they are hunting down the dinosaurs, trying to find Blue. They find Blue, and the military guys pop in and trank trank them. Doesn't go down right away and attacks one of them. And I thought this was a, a really interesting moment because the the guy is being mauled to death, and he pulls out his gun and shoots him. And you're kind of like. You kind of feel like, oh, he was unfairly shot. But this is, a, again, a monster tearing apart a person. And the person is trying to protect themselves. And so it's, it's just really interesting the way the movie is able to portray the uh, blue, the raptor, as sympathetic. Because, again, if this was a, a lion, this was a bear... I don't think you would connect with them quite as well. I mean, there's a lot more that they establish between Blue and Chris Pratt and how important he is to him and the ambush on the Raptor was kind of unfair, whatever. But still, you you feel worse for Blue being shot than the guy getting mauled to death. And it was just an interesting uh, thing that the movie was able to make you feel. Um, and so we find out that all of this, everything that happened was all set up. The military guys, uh, they end up tranking Chris Pratt and leaving him to die. They lock Bryce Dallas Howard and uh, Franklin in a room. And because Blue got shot, they need Zia, who's the vet, to come with them to keep him alive. But she grabs a pistol and aims it at the military guy and like starts making demands about how she you know they can't kill chris pratt or you know that they need her to keep blue alive and all this stuff and it just i don't know i maybe i'd be really curious to know if anyone else enjoyed her character because i i didn't there was really not much that i liked about her um 
And so we find out that it, it was all set up. They're taking all the dinosaurs uh, off the island to the rich guy who's working for um, Heyman's uh, ex-partner or whatever. And he's going to auction off all the dinosaurs just for money. And then they're going to take the money and then they're going to start a bigger lab to make more dinosaurs and you know start you know trying to build on top of the success they have from this and i thought the auction really slowed the movie down um i don't know it, it was a it went on for a long time so they kept jumping back to it but everything that was uh, spliced in the middle everything that happened outside of the auction was way more interesting them running around the, the the mansion and you know either escaping dinosaurs or trying to stop the military guys and that that was way more interesting and they it would halt the um, the momentum would just stop because they would go to back to the auction and the auction was kind of it felt so out of place for the tone of the rest of the movie where everything else felt grounded somewhat considering it's about dinosaurs and you know and all that um it felt it it felt more realistic where this felt more um stylized i guess or like these are like cartoonishly evil people and so that i don't know i i I didn't like the auction but it's fine it's whatever um dr Wu is back and he is continuing to help the bad guys but do it for his noble reasons of wanting to further science i guess i i don't know his his character's kind of boring uh there's just the generic gruff military guy uh imagine the guy from avatar and that's basically what you have here and uh the sleazy rich guy who i mean it's not really <laughs> that's pretty much it he he's driven by money and uh does a lot of bad things to do that now there was uh quite a bit of callbacks or symbolism or references to the first movie which i thought was done exceptionally well i was i was shocked every time they did it because it it never it was never like in your face they never like forced you to pay attention there's one scene where chris pratt walks along walks upon a overturned uh jeep and you it's easy to assume and i'm I'm sure it is like i'm 95 percent sure it is that it's the jeep from the first movie that the kids were in when the t-rex was you know stomping on it trying to get at them and that was it they they basically just show it and they they use it a little bit to hide a dinosaur behind it but it's not it's not like slammed in your face and then there's this which i thought so there's this <laughs> sorry uh the volcano erupts and you know lava's coming down dinosaurs are running off and there's smoke all over the place and there's this beautiful shot of um, a bronchiosaurus i believe it is that is you know dying it's it's on the dock and it can't go anywhere and the lava's coming the smoke is covering it and you see it through the smoke stand up on its hind legs and i i could be wrong but i believe it it was exactly what the bronchiosaurus in the first movie when they first walked upon it did and it was like this you know this just this really powerful image of comparing like the 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 majesty or the uh the excitement the newness of the first one of like wow look at this you know dinosaurs are real or whatever to they're you know they're dying this horrible death you know it's it, it's being destroyed and i i thought it was i i really thought that this movie was because they <clears throat> sorry i keep getting a little distracted they they kept destroying those symbols the all the references to the first movie they were destroying them with the lava it was you know burning them and you know taking them away like the car that i was talking about earlier the brachiosaurus 
all this stuff was being destroyed by the lava and i was like oh wow they're they're actually closing the book on this they're they're shutting it down they're removing everything they're you know they're 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 book ending the the movies with all the symbolism all the references and they're doing it really well and i was getting uh excited because i was like wow they're they're actually going to end this satisfyingly they're not going to leave it open they're gonna actually just you know like you know what here you go this is you know you this is something you loved as a kid here here it is this is the end just say goodbye and that's it like that's kind of what i thought was happening and I, i was excited for that um we see at the end oh well there's how do i what's the best way to (laughs) to go on uh there's a girl Maisie, who is the granddaughter and she is asking about her mom doesn't doesn't know her mom and we find out that she's a clone and they they actually reveal it really well at first by showing she finally finds a picture of her mom and it's just her and like you watch it and you're like what that's because you i kind of expected her mom to be someone a character from the first movie and i was like oh that's gonna be kind of weird because it's like it's gonna feel really uh forced but they reveal the picture and it's basically just her and uh, for a second i was like what what's going on like am i supposed to recognize her and then it clicked. I was like, oh, no, she's a clone. That that makes so much sense. Like, you have this technology. Of course, that's where it's going to end up. Of course, you're going to clone someone. And I thought uh, they the way they revealed that was great. And, you know, and I don't know if everyone is going to figure it out right away. And I, I don't think that I'm special for figuring it out. It just, for some reason, it clicked in my head. Um but then they actually reveal it. They give you the, the entire story where the bad guy is talking to Chris Pratt and he says, let's see if I can remember what he says. He tells him, he's like, give me back the girl. And Chris Pratt's like, no. And he's like, oh, you're going to take care of her? You don't even know what she is. And then he's like, he, he never had a granddaughter. He just wanted his daughter back. So he cloned her. Yeah, that's right. She's a clone. And like something really close to that and then it was just like oh you you're doing so well up until that point um and they i just i felt like they missed the landing on on that but the the it was it's just such an interesting thing to think about which is what these movies should do these you know science fiction type movies should make you question like oh what would i do in this situation or is this ethical or is this okay since it's done what should we do about it how to react to something like this and this movie really pushed on those buttons um so the movie movie ends at the mansion and there is smoke filling up all the cages of the dinosaurs that were going to be auctioned off um because gunshots have gone off and it hit a pipeline and is basically killing all the dinosaurs and Bryce Dallas Howard has, she opens up all the cells, and then there's one final door to open, and she's about to open it, and Chris Pratt's like, hey, you, if you do this, there's no going back. This is it. You're, if you let them, fr- <clears throat> if you let them free, that's it. We, you can't take, you can't undo that. And she's just like, I can't let them die. I, what do I do? I can't, I can't just, you know, sit here and let them die. And she's about to push the button and closes the flap, closes the lid. And I was, I was just shocked. I was like, wow, they, they're ending this with a question. The character has a choice and she has a difficult choice. You let them all go and they are going to wreak havoc in society. You know, they could, who knows how many people could die because you let all these dinosaurs out or these animals that you've been fighting for and you know trying to protect and keep alive are going to die right in front of you a pretty terrible death and she chose to let them die and i was just 
I was blown away that they would do that, that they had the willingness to kill all the dinosaurs and leave it in a, a difficult choice, leave it in the hands of Bryce Alice Howard, a difficult choice. And it was like so compelling. And her and Chris Pratt walk up to the window and they're watching the dinosaurs die. And then all of a sudden the doors open and it ruined all of that for me. I was so annoyed because I was so invested into that moment. And they turn around and the clone girl push the button and says, they are alive just like me. They deserve a chance to live. And then all the dinosaurs run out and start causing havoc. Um, so that was annoying, but you know, that's whatever. Uh, one of, one of the other things that I really disliked that this movie did and the the previous one did is the T-Rex came back and blue came back and they were constantly saving the main characters. Anytime the characters got in a jam, one of those two dinosaurs would show up and protect them and blue i kind of get it right he's connected to chris pratt he feels like they are the same that he's like chris pratt's kind of his alpha so it's like his job to protect him and stuff like that but i kind of get that but it's very convenient how blue always shows up at the right spot at the right time like with just a second to spare so that gets old um but the t-rex i don't get it doesn't it doesn't make any sense why the t-rex is constantly helping them um in this one it's a little bit better than the last one in the last one there's like they basically like nod at each other <laughs> i think it, uh, blue and t-rex nod at each other like oh we did a good job then nothing like that happens in this one but there's a few moments where it's like really the t-rex would do that or you know accidentally bump the ball to push it down the hill and i don't know it, it's it's whatever the the dinosaurs had actions as if they had motivations to protect the main characters and i thought that's kind of dumb you know in the first movie when the t-rex shows up and saves the kids from the raptors it makes sense because he's just he's just trying to eat you know, it's, it's not about saving the kids. It, he saw a chance to eat a raptor, and so he went after it. These, it seems like they're heading to protect. And I, I, and I, don't, I don't enjoy that. I think it's kind of dumb. Um, and then, what else happened? They pretty much just ride off into the sunset. And, uh. The, the dinosaurs are, you know, attacking people or there's a scene where the T-Rex is roaring at a lion in a zoo. Um, I don't know. It, it, it seems like they're uh, setting up for another movie in this franchise, which is disappointing because it really could have ended here and it could have ended so well. They... They did so much right in this movie, and then everything they did to set up the next one felt very forced in and unnecessary. Like they, they, they killed off all the connection to the original movie in this movie, like symbolically and you know pretty literally. Uh, everything about the first one is is gone, and it's just like okay, just let that be it. Let's just walk away. Everyone can be content. But I don't know. We'll see. Maybe the next one will be good too. I mean, I'm I was shocked at that how much I enjoyed this one. I had no expectations of liking it and it was really good. So if you've seen it, let me know what you think and uh, we'll be back with the podcast in a couple of days.